welcome back to my channel. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. My name is Muriel and this is part two of my two-part tier list video series about dragons. <laughs> Quite simply, part one was about me ranking dragons according to the quality of the CGI incarnations in movies and TV series. So I kind of judged them on anatomy and presence, things like that. Here I'm taking a closer look at dragon characters in fiction. I actually think I said in part one that it was going to be about books exclusively, but no, it's actually dragon characters in fictions across different kinds of media. So books, of course, also video games and movies. So without further ado, we're going to start with three characters from the Age of Fire series which I mentioned in my very first tier list video, which was about ranking SFF universes. So the Age of Fire series is a hexology of books written by E.E. E. Knight. And what's very special about it is that the main characters are dragons. So you're in their heads. They're not humanoids, not elves, dwarves, or anything like that. Straight up animal dragons. The three first books in that series each have as the main protagonists a dragon character from the same family. And basically those hatchlings' parents were killed by dragon hunters. And so they will go and grow up their separate ways and have different experiences. They do minor spoiler warning, kind of get back together at some point in the story. So first you have Whistler. And so Whistler is a female dragon. In that universe, basically all female dragons are green, and the way their name's structured is very similar, it always ends in an A. And then male dragons can be different several colours, and their names are made up of like two stressed syllables. So for example, this one is our Ron, and he's Rugard. I really, really liked Whistler's perspective and her life journey. She basically kind of rebels against the gender norms that dragons have. Females are basically supposed to care about mating and having clutches and taking care of dragon hatchlings. And she's like, I don't care about that. I don't care about perpetuating my family's line. And she has adventures and befriends different types of humanoids because they're different humanoid species in that universe. And I really loved her. She's a great, assertive, strong, female dragon character. So as such, I'm going to put her in A tier for now. That might change. Then we have our Ron. He's actually the main character of the very first book in that series, Dragon Champion, I think it's called. And so he's born a bit different. It was expected he would die at birth because so in dragon society, when uh, babies hatch, males kind of squabble with one another. A bit like with a lot of birds of prey, for example, and the weakest basically gets killed off and the parents accept that. And so that way they uh, well, select the strongest among their hatchlings. And Auron doesn't have any scales. He's a scaleless dragon and gray colored and the runt of the litter in a way, but he manages to survive and has a great adventure and ends up having a family. And I thought he was a very engaging, draconic character. I loved following his story. I don't love him more than Whistler though, so I guess I might put him in B tier. Then we have Rugard, so you get his perspective in the third book of the Age of Fire series. And he actually tries to kill Aaron in the very first book because he's stronger, he's a copper colored dragon with scales. But then he ends up going through a lot of crap and ends up finding an underground society where dragons have enslaved humanoids. So that, that's an interesting perspective. Dragons are like the dominant species and they have human and human-like roles that serve them. And it, it was really cool. I would highly recommend that series. It's quite different in terms of fantasy. He's harder to like because he's very tough and very resentful about how his hatchlinghood turned out and all the travails he had to go through to get where he ends up. But he's, he's a complex character. Uh, layers of grey to him and I found him very, very interesting. I actually wonder if I didn't find him overall more interesting than Aaron, even if he's less overtly 
good as, as an individual. So perhaps I'll put him in B tier as well, but above our Ron. Then, of course, I needed to have a representative of dragon kind from the Earth Sea cycle, so I took Kalesin. We also have another dragon character that's simple, that's called Orm Embar, but again, minor spoiler, he dies by book three. But you have Kalesin, and Kalesin is present in book four to Hanu and perhaps in the other wind. Memory's a bit foggy. Apologies for that. What I liked about him is the archetype of the wise old dragon with a beast, an animal of majestic and grandiose proportions who can be terrifying because this is a creature that can just open its mouth and burn you to a crisp and annihilate you. So they're dangerous animals. But they're also extremely cunning and intelligent and wise because they live such long lives. And in the world of Earthsea, they are related to humans. It's a very weird piece of world building, but humans and dragons used to be kind of like a unified species and then they split humans inherited the seas and the earth and the making and shaping of things and the hoarding of things ironically enough and dragons inherited fire and the skies and the freedom to just be and exist in the world and Kalesin embodies all of that and helps some of the main characters in these stories of Earthsea and so he's, he's a brilliant example of that dragon stereotypical character a bit like Gandalf is the stereotypical old wizard and so as such I guess I'll put him at top of B tier or maybe, no, oof, wait a minute, okay, bottom of B tier, because you don't get that much personal characterization out of him. He's more an archetype than anything else, but he was a well-realized one. Then we have Draco from Dragonheart, which I already mentioned in part one, but I'm now judging his character as an individual dragon. So you gotta understand that Dragonheart was one of my favorite movies as a kid, along with things like um, Jurassic Park or The Land Before Time, Littlefoot things like that. Dragonheart is a movie that just had me bawling by the end because, spoiler alert, he dies at the end of the movie and he's like the last of his kind, the last dragon to exist on Earth. And here again, it's kind of the archetype of the wise old dragon. A bit more benevolent though than someone like Kalesin because he's like, the only reason I'm dangerous and I burn shit up is because you humans keep bugging the crap out of me. Just leave me alone. I'm the last of my kind. You've hunted all of my brethren to extinction. And there's this whole thing with the fact that you can use a piece of a dragon's heart to keep a human being alive. And that's a major plot element of dragon heart, hence the name. But he's, he's fundamentally good and wise and a lovable dragon character. Perhaps a bit too simplistically good, though. So as such, I'll put him again in in B tier, but above Kalesin, perhaps, because you, you, I mean, you, you interact with him a lot more in the movie because it's centered around him as the main character. Then we have a bad dragon, uh, stereotypically like evil dragon, and what well, in Tolkien's world, all dragons are basically bad, which it had been disappointing, but fair enough. Smaug. Yes, Smaug. Smaug has a lot of character. He really gets developed and fleshed out as a draconic character, so major points to that. And then, like I said, there's this brilliant interaction between him and Bilbo and the mind games between them. And that's just a brilliant bit of storytelling, let's be real here. So, huh, this is difficult. I think I'm gonna put him in A tier. Because he's a great villainous dragon. For the little bit you get of him, he's really well done for what he's supposed to be. So yeah, A tier but below Whistler. Then we have something that is also very near and dear to my heart. Spyro the Dragon from the video game franchise. You gotta understand that Spyro was my favourite game growing up. I played all three of them on PlayStation 1, and I played Spyro, like, Enter the Dragonfly, which was very bad, <laughs> PlayStation 2, and then Spyro, A Hero's Tale, which was a bit different. I never played any of, like, well, actually, I did play one of the new trilogy Spyros, but I didn't like them nearly as much. The story was very different. I mean, I like the fact that it was, like, a female character called Cinder, but it didn't have the magic of the original games, in my opinion. And now I'm aware that 
that they've actually remastered the original trilogy. I don't have the right console to play them, so I don't know. One day I might have to invest in like a Switch to be able to play those because graphically they look amazing. So, okay, as a character, there isn't that much development to him, uh, but he is a, he's a spiffy little dragon and he's funny and cheeky and brave and he just rushes into adventure and great interactions with all of the other characters. It's not on the same level as something like the dragon characters of the Age of Fire, but because of sheer nostalgia, I'm gonna have to put him in S tier. <laughs> I know it's it's a weird logic, but that's a, it's a very precious part of my childhood. It is Spyro. Spyro is awesome, and that's just all there is to it. So yeah, S tier. And so then we have Toothless from the How to Train Your Dragon series of books I'm aware, of, but I only saw the DreamWorks movie adaptations. Okay, so. Toothless is very cute, also fierce at times, to be fair, and sweet, and people have <laughs> remarked upon the fact that he's like basically a cat, but as a dragon. And and yeah, he's very lovable. As a character, though, I don't think there's much to him, so I'm just going to put him C tier, because I don't have much to say about him as an individual dragon character. He's cute, sure, but not much to him, in my opinion. We have the uh, female dragon from the Shrek series. So, the Shrek movies are, are some of my favourite dream works. I think there's a lot of humour in there, and I like the, the reinterpretations of, like, fairy tales and things like that. And I liked in the very first movie the fact that you've got this dragon guarding Fiona, and everyone's kind of expecting it to be the generic evil, you know, fairy tale dragon guarding the princess. But then it's like this female dragon that's just feeling very lonely and she falls in love with freaking donkey of all things. They end up together and somehow mating. I don't know how that worked. And then they got these hybrid babies that I have donkey up dragon. And it was just it was absurd in a way, but so cute. Again, I don't think she has that much personality. But it was cute and it, it was funny and, and silly. But there's a lot of silliness in those movies, like you know, the, the ginormous gingerbread man and things like that. So I do think she deserved to be mentioned in this list. Of course I'm not gonna rank her that high. And I say I mean I don't know if she has does she have a name? I can't remember. But so yeah, I'm going to put her above Toothless in C tier. So then we have Glaurung uh, from the Silmarillion, more specifically the Children of Hurin. Again, he thought Smaug was bad. Glaurung is even more big bad-ish. He's a really bad dragon. Interestingly enough, a wingless dragon, so more like a drake. He's a good villain, or I mean, he's a good villainous dragon, though ultimately it worked less for me than Smaug. Not sure why, maybe a bit too maniacally or overwhelmingly evil, taunting Turin with the whole like <laughs> incest plot thing. I don't know, I mean of course I have to add that I'm a bit biased because I'm not a big fan of like wingless dragons, but I mean that's neither here nor there. So um how shall I rank him? I guess he does deserve to be above C, so I'm just gonna put him at the bottom of B tier. Heavy B tier again. So then we have Kilgara, which I already mentioned in part one. So he's the dragon character in the TV series Merlin. There actually is another dragon character in that series that becomes Morgana's companion, but he or she is a lot less developed, so I didn't include it. I think Kilgara is actually a really good character, a complex dragon character, because he advises Merlin, but then kind of manipulates him to escape from his cavern imprisonment. There's lots of sadness to Kilgara because he's also, or at least he thinks he's the last of his kind and that his kind has been driven to extinction by human beings and their assholeish ways. And he's of course friendly to the old pagan inspired ways and things like that. So I really liked him as a character. As such, I shall put him in A tier as well. I think I'll put him above Smaug. We come to Sephira from the Inheritance Cycle, and Sephira is just a wonderful dragon character, very well realized because she's a main character even though you don't get like her direct point of view. And to be fair, there are other dragon characters. There's Glader, there's 
um, Galbatrix's dragon, and then I'm sorry, I'm forgetting everything this evening, but there's a fourth dragon. But let's focus on Sephira, because she's the star of the show, really. <laughs> and she's a wonderful character. You see her grow up alongside Aragon, and you get a lot of her thoughts and feelings. She's an actual character in the story, and a good one, too. So, to me, she's going to go in 80. I'm going to put her above Spyro, because, I mean, Spyro is kind of like an exception. He's just there for sheer nostalgia factor, the fact he can play him on PlayStation. But, you know, Sephira definite S tier. And then finally, we have Ruth from The White Dragon, which is one of the entries in the Chronicles of Pern, which I did a review for this year. And so Ruth is kind of like toothless in the sense that he is freaking adorable as a dragon character, but he's more fleshed out. He's more developed as an individual character, and you get a lot of his interventions and his relationship with Jackson, and he's just so sweet and nice, maybe a bit naive at times, but just always wants to help out and do the right thing and nudge Jackson in the right direction and be of service. You just want to give him a big old hug, have him as, well, I wouldn't say pet, but as your animal companion forever. So as such, I think I'm going to put him at the top of B tier. Or maybe bottom of A tier, you know what? Screw it. I technically think that like these three are as developed for I mean no. I think I I have to put Ruth in B tier, perhaps yeah, below Aaron and Rugard, because Aaron and Rugard are actual main characters of their own novels, and they are fleshed out as main characters, and Ruth isn't quite that, so sorry, I got a bit muddled there. He's, yeah, in middle B tier. So as you can see, nothing in D tier. I did find a sufficiently garbage dragon character, where I, I guess I'd chose to ignore one if I thought of one, but I don't think I did. So again, it's one of those lists where there's a heavy B tier, but uh, I'm overall fairly happy with the ranking. Again, Spyro is kind of a cheat entry because the level of character development for Spyro definitely isn't on the same level as like these characters or these. And it's Spyro, it's Spyro the dragon, the little purple dragon going on adventures, so screw it. He's staying right where he is. And that's it for these uh, two dragon themed tier lists and that's it for tier lists for now. I do have a couple of other tier lists I'd like to do. You must know I want to do one with A Song of Ice and Fire characters, all of them, or at least all of the main and secondary ones, but that's going to take a while and I, like I said, I, I don't really know if I'll be home in the coming weeks. And uh, There's one I would like to do about uh, Ursula K. Le Guin works, so perhaps that will wait until 2021. I don't know yet, but so uh, I hope you found these uh, lists entertaining somewhat and I hope you're all doing well. I hope you will have a lovely day, evening, whichever time of day you prefer and I shall see you in the next video. Not sure when that will be but hopefully not too long. Bye!